Hey there folks and welcome back. Our next topic is a really cool one, multivariate limits. These are just like the limits you knew back in Calc 1, except now we're dealing with multivariable functions. So if you didn't like limits before, you're gonna hate them now. Just kidding, this is a fun topic, a little bit challenging, but I hope you find it interesting. It corresponds to section 14.2 from the text, so check it out for some more information. Okay, we're gonna begin by talking about limits as you know them from Calc 1. The question you asked when dealing with limits was always, how does your function f of x behave as x gets very, very close to some value a? Not equal to a, but very, very close to a. For example, consider the function that I've graphed down here below. Suppose that our a value is this point here on the left. The question is, what does our function do as x gets close to a? Well, there are a couple different ways that we can get close to a, right? We could come in from the left, and it appears that when we come in from the left-hand side, our y value is approaching some value up here. Maybe we'll call it l. If instead we come in from the only other possible way, from the right, well, it looks like our function is again approaching that same y value. In this case, since the behavior of the function is the same, no matter which path we take to x equals a, we say that the limit as x goes to a of f of x exists and is equal to l. Suppose now that instead of approaching this point on the left, we are interested in the behavior of our function as we approach this point over here on the right. Maybe we'll call this point b. Well, as we approach from the left, it looks like our function is approaching some positive y value up here. But if we approach from the right-hand side, ooh, our function seems to be approaching a negative value. The behavior of the function is not consistent between approaching from the left and approaching from the right. So in this case, we simply say the limit doesn't exist. The limit as x goes to b of f of x does not exist. Since the behavior is different along different paths, we fail to have a limit. We now turn our attention to the idea of a limit in Calc 3. In Calc 3, we're dealing with functions with multiple inputs, and the graphs of these functions are a lot more complicated than the graphs we knew back in Calc 1. Still, the question is going to be the same. How does our function, say f of x, y, behave as x, y approaches some target input, a, b? For the sake of example, let's consider a function like this, and suppose that our target input is this point right here, 0, 0. We want to know, what is our function doing as the inputs are getting close to 0, 0? With a little bit of thought, you'll start to realize that this problem has become significantly more complicated. After all, back in Calc 1, there were really only two ways for x to approach some target input a, either from the left or from the right. As long as the behavior of the function is the same along both of these paths, the limit will exist. In Calc 3, however, we don't just have a left path and a right path. We can approach AB along infinitely many paths, from infinitely many different directions. For example, we could approach AB along this red line here, the line x equals 0. When we do this, the function appears to be approaching some value up here. Alternatively, however, we could have approached AB using this red line, the line y equals 0. When we do this, it appears that the function is still approaching that same value up here. Of course, we've only checked two paths. There are infinitely many more left to check. For the limit to exist, the function must approach the same value along every single path to AB. Now you might be wondering, what does a multivariable function even look like if it's approaching different values along different paths to AB? I remember finding visualizing such a function pretty difficult when I was a student. Well, here is a concrete example. The function f of xy equals xy squared over x squared plus y to the 4. The graph of this function is shown here. Looks pretty complicated, right? Well, suppose that we're trying to approach the target input 0, 0. That's this point here. If we approach 0, 0 along this line, the line y equals 0, it looks like my function is approaching this value right here, z equals 0. If instead, however, we approach 0, 0 along this arc, this curved path at the crest of our function, 
Well, then our function is not approaching z equals zero. Now it's approaching this value, z equals 0 0.5. So what we've shown is that there are at least two different paths to 0, 0, along which the function is approaching different values. Well, at this point, folks, we can stop. There's no need to check further paths. If we can find just two paths to a, b, where the function is approaching different values, we simply say the limit does not exist. As a first example, let's use what we've just discussed to show that this limit, the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of x squared over x squared plus y squared does not exist. Now note that this function, x squared over x squared plus y squared, is not defined at 0, 0 because we would be dividing by 0 there. But that's okay. The limit doesn't care what the function is doing at 0, 0. It just cares what the function is doing near 0, 0. According to what we discussed on the last slide, we can conclude that this limit does not exist if we can find two paths to 0, 0 where the function is approaching two different values. So let's just start by trying some paths. What happens if we approach 0, 0 along the line x equals 0? That is, along the y-axis. Well, when x is 0, we're really considering the limit as 0, y goes to 0, 0 of 0 squared over 0 squared plus y squared. Notice that my function here is just 0, right? My function is 0 along the y-axis. So as y goes to 0 here, we're just going to get 0. Okay, that's one path. Let's try another. What happens if we come in along the x-axis, along the path where y is equal to 0? Well, in that case, we're considering the limit as x0 goes to 0, 0 of x squared over x squared plus 0 squared. Now my function is exactly 1. Our function is 1 along the x-axis, so as x goes to 0, we get a limit of 1. Okay. Along the line x equals 0, we have a limit of 0. But along the line y equals 0, we have a limit of 1. Since we're approaching two different values as we head to the origin, we conclude that the limit does not exist. Just like on the last slide, you can see this behavior in the graph of the function. If we approach along the y-axis, we get a value of 0. But if we approach along the x-axis, we get a value of 1. 